Ants digging a hole in the boy's neck and lived inside him to keep the class from finding out. Usually he had to use a band-aid to seal the hole. Because of the presence of these ants, Shinny's food intake increased greatly. He had to keep eating every day. At the same time, this gave Shinny great strength. Even the most ferocious insect beasts can be easily defeated. On this day, late at night, in an alley, two men trailing a sexy woman unhurriedly. Soon the girl was blocked in the corner. She could only cover her chest with her hands helplessly. Two men saw this with an obscene smile. But before the two men could extend their salty hands, there was a sudden sound of footsteps behind them. I saw the boy say indifferently, if you do not want to die, then hurry up and go. Seeing that the visitor was just a student, the two robbers suddenly looked fierce. You're the one who wants to die, right? The boy stopped paying attention to the two men. He tore off the band-aid he had put on his neck. The little hole in his neck actually burst out a few ants. Just as one of the robbers tried to come up and teach him a lesson, there was a sudden scream behind him. He turned around and found that his companion had only the lower half of his body left, and the upper half of his body was in a big writhing mouth. And look at the beautiful woman just now. At this point she has turned into a horrible monster. On the contrary, the boy has been wrapped in a layer of black fog all over his body. A closer look at this was a group of black ants. Early the next morning, the place was then blocked off by the relevant people. The leader was a long-haired man with glasses. They found the monster's body and the half-eaten body left here. It's hard to imagine who took out such a powerful monster. The only clue is the robber who escaped that night. He said a boy with a bug did it. These people who came to investigate were wearing the symbol of the insect beast reaper. This was a department set up by the government to deal with insect beasts and beasts. A few years ago, these insect beasts appeared out of nowhere. They mostly feed on people. The scariest thing is that these insect beasts can disguise themselves as humans. They live among us. In a schoolroom at this time, the class president was reading aloud from the reaper section. A boy with a band-aid on his neck keeps bringing food into his mouth. After the class leader Name reads out the content, the teacher on the stage told the students to be careful these days. Because the place where the accident happened last night is right next to the school. Hearing the teacher say that, Name looked at her friend in distress. The two of them decided to go home together after school. At the end of class, the teacher reminded Name to turn in her last assignment to the office. A sigh of relief came from the students' mouths as they listened, because not many people would finish their homework. After the teacher left, two students threatened Name not to collect homework, because it's impossible for anyone to complete such an assignment. But before the two finished speaking, a workbook was handed to the class president. It's Shinny with a band-aid on neck. But this also caused the two punks to get upset. They've had a problem with Shinny for a long time. Putting a band-aid on neck and playing it cool. Is that a strawberry mark left by your girlfriend? Name, who had a crush on Shinny, immediately stood up. Don't talk nonsense. The boys didn't react to seeing Shinny. So he reached down and tore off the band-aid on his neck. But they didn't see any hickeys. And they only saw a small spot. The boy thinks he's been tricked. Then he picked up Shinny by the collar and tried to teach him a lesson. But then an ant came out of the hole and crawled under his clothes and hid. This scene instantly scared the boy to the ground and he screamed. People just thought he was crazy and didn't take it seriously. At the end of the school day Name gave her and Shinny's homework to the teacher. They were the only ones in the class who finished their homework. The teacher's face immediately became gloomy when he learned of the situation. I don't know what he was muttering. While Name was wondering, the teacher looked up again with a smile. You and Shinny can go home after school. The rest of you stay and clean up the playground. Because of the strange events in the alley yesterday, Name was afraid to go home alone. Just saw Shinny who was applying a band-aid in front of her. Because the two live not far from each other. Name then invited him to go home with him. But Shinny said she had something to do today and refused Name's invitation. The two guys who were left to clean up kept complaining. Shurjan told them to cut the crap and finish the job and go home. Name had to wait here for Shurjan because there was no one else to go with. At that moment Shinny was sitting in the classroom and talking to herself. He seems to be communicating with the ants in this book about something. Two punks get ready to go after Shinny's trouble. While discussing what they saw yesterday about Shinny's ants, they walked towards the classroom. 
But just as they reached the corner, the short-haired man froze in his tracks. Because there was a huge monster blocking the way. The short-haired man's head was cut off by the monster before he could react. The girl let out a creepy scream as she looked at the object that rolled to her feet. The students were all fascinated by the girl's screams. And then the girl went crazy through the crowd. Run, everyone, there's a insect beast. The crowd turned around to find a giant spherical insect beast coming out. It was obviously too late to escape. By the time Name and Shurjin reacted, the bug beast was almost in front of them. The two men tried their best to escape. The four eyes behind him grabbed Shurjin in front of him in order to stay alive. She was then viciously yanked backwards. Shurjin loses focus, hit her head hard on a rock. Name rushed forward to help Shurjin up and found that she had passed out. And she herself could only watch in despair as the insect beast slowly approached. And the monster stopped next to Name, only to see the top of his head slowly split open. The teacher's face appeared inside. Didn't I kindly tell you to leave after school? Since you don't listen to your teachers either, you can go to hell just like them. With that, the monster raised his fist and slammed it into Name. And at that moment, a colony of ants is coming here at a great speed. The monster's two arms were instantly cut off. Name looked behind him with a bewildered face. An armored warrior surrounded by a lot of black matter appeared in front of her. The warrior quickly caught Name, who had fainted from the shock. The bug beast looked at his falling arm and didn't care. Because he had heard of the existence of the fellow hunter black ants. He just couldn't understand why the black ants were protecting humans. Facing the monster's hiss, the black ant responds with a punch. This punch slammed the monster directly into the wall, blood spurting out of his mouth. The black ants took the opportunity to carry the two girls on their backs and put them in a safe place. Then come to the monster again. He said the reason he hunted his own kind was just to eat them. The insect beast was instantly furious, in that case. Then let me avenge the death of my compatriots. And the monster turned into a big ball, and then it shot at the black ants like a bullet. The black ant tried to fight it with strength, but was accidentally knocked away by the huge impact for several dozen meters. Looking at the black ants sitting on the ground, the monster wasn't going to let him go. The monster's legs slowly bent like a spring, then the body flew into the sky like a cannonball aimed at the black ants below and smashed down heavily towards his body. The black ant was too late to dodge and was hit head-on, spitting black blood. But it didn't end there. The monster continues to bounce away. A few more heavy blows to the black ant's body. By now, the black ant's limbs were completely twisted in the deep pit. He gave the ants the command to move despite the pain. At the same time, the monster's next attack was just around the corner. Only a loud bang was heard. The monster slammed down hard on the black ants. He thought this blow would be enough to smash the black ant into mush. But he didn't expect that not only was the black ant unharmed. Instead, his own body was pierced. The monster didn't understand what was going on. Black ant gives the command again, convert. The armor that was wrapped around his feet slowly dissipated. The black matter slowly converged towards his arms. In the blink of an eye, a huge sharp claw appeared in front of him. At this point, the monster finally sensed the crisis, begging the black ant to let it go. But it's obviously too late to beg for mercy. He drove his claws directly into the monster's stomach. Then he lifted the monster above his head and slammed it into the ground. The monster regretted this moment. Obviously, I have heard of the black ant. Why do I still to mess with him? Without waiting for him to beg for mercy again, he was lifted into the air again by the black ants. And finally with a roar from the black ants, the monster's entire body became twisted. With a loud bang, the monster turned into a blood mist. As they left, the black ants gave the order again, eat it. The black substance that received the command left the black ants' body instantly. Shinny's figure slowly emerged. At this point Shinny didn't notice. This battle was watched by the humanoid insect beast behind him. Although he hit it well, but he was also investigated by the reapers. Just now, he took out a terrible bug beast on campus. Shinny let the ants inside her eat the corpse of the bug beast after. The reaper sector came here. Looking at the scene of the dilapidation, the two hunters couldn't help but feel, and in vain to prepare so long. Judging by the traces of the scene, it's easy to see that this was a battle between two insect beasts. But insect beasts basically don't kill each other. What exactly happened between them? 
At this point, the captain suddenly remembered something. The female bugbear that appeared in the alley two days ago. The only survivor said she was taken out by a black ant boy. Just then the staff informed the captain. The wounded man saved by the bug beast woke up. Soon the two came to Name's side. Name recounted the events of that time. It was a black armored man who saved her from herself. Are you sure it was a human who saved you? Name not sure. But the man in black was definitely different from the other bug beasts. Through a simple inquiry, the captain felt that the man in black should be acquainted with Name. So he asked Name, were there any students who were not present at that time? Name replied, there was indeed one. Shinny was the only one who got out of school on time. By this time, Shinny had already returned home. Grandma was the first to welcome her. Let him go over for dinner. Shinny was a little helpless to see such a rich food. Because he had just eaten a whole insect beast. He could only tell his grandmother that he had eaten. Grandma was shocked when she heard that. And then she immediately asked if Shinny was hurt. Shinny just felt that she had let down her grandmother. Grandma said as long as people are okay, get some rest. After watching Shinny walk into the room, Grandma couldn't hold it any longer. Tears flowed unconsciously. Why is my Shinny suffering like this? At this moment, the ants outside the window crawled into the window in an orderly manner. Shinny was lying quietly on the bed, listening to the reports of the daytime school bug beasts, letting those ants go one by one to the hole in the neck. In an abandoned construction site on the outskirts of the city, several soldiers came here looking for the missing child. The team leader carefully directed the group to climb the stairs. He couldn't help but be surprised when he saw what was going on in the room. A group of cocoon-like things were hanging in mid-air. At this point, another car arrived outside. Inside was the Reaper squad. The hedgehog in the driver's seat was waiting impatiently. I don't understand why the superiors sent those soldiers out. Beige on the other side comforted him. After all, their department is still reviewing. The police presence has priority in the investigation. Right at this moment, the car's communicator sounded a request for backup. Just now, the soldiers took the liberty of releasing the cocoons to save the children. The team leader's men opened the cocoons to see. There was indeed a child inside. The team rushed to open another cocoon. Just as he was getting confused, the head was instantly penetrated by something in this. A humanoid mosquito bug beast appeared in front of the crowd. Team leader looked at this insect beast and was slow to slow down. Another teammate hurriedly fired at the insect beastoid. But the insect beastoid disappeared in a flash. When he reappeared he had already penetrated the body of his teammate. The beast then immediately turned around and stabbed at the team leader again. Suddenly a gunshot interrupted the attack. The hard needle is also penetrated by the bullet. It turns out that on the distant towers, Beige had been waiting with a sniper rifle for a long time. But the bug was too fast. He missed the target. The attacked insect beast is extremely angry. Then he charged at the team leader again. But the hedgehog appeared just in time to block the bugbear's attack. And then he knocked the beast away with a stick. The insect beast was heavily set in the wall. The captain took this opportunity to have someone take the child and leave first. How can a bug beast give up its food so easily? He rushed towards the child in anger. The captain saw this and simply exhaled a soft puff of green smoke. The bug that smelled the cigarette instantly fell to the ground. Then the captain asked, What is your purpose in capturing these children? The bug beast yanked the needle off with one hand, saying that it was food prepared to destroy the black ants. The two men didn't quite understand what he was talking about. He took advantage of the two men's inattention. The beast spat some darts out of its mouth and shot at them. The captain spits out smoke again. The dart miraculously stopped in midair. The hedgehog also blocked the attack by waving his stick. The insect beast knew it was no match for the two, and took the opportunity to fly out the window. The captain saw this and quickly alerted Beige to snipe. But Beige fell to the ground after being hit by several darts due to his inexperience. The two people inside the house could only watch the insect beasts escape. On the other hand, Name was sitting on a chair in the park. Looking at the man with glasses being honored in the phone, she got very angry, because her best friend Shurjan was disfigured and lying in the hospital. It was because the man with glasses pulled her at the time. Suddenly a boy in a mask appeared. Name was taken aback, but then he was educated by Naime. The boy had to cry and go to his mother to complain. Why do I have such a naughty brother when I'm so ladylike? When Name turned around again and found that Shinny had somehow arrived. Shinny also noticed Name off to the side. So the three of them sat down and ate ice cream together. After eating the ice cream, the brother ran off to play with another child. The boy accidentally kicked the ball off the field. 
The brother said he would go with the boy to find the ball. Then he followed him through the broken hole in the barrier. Shinny seemed to sense something. Tell Name to wait here. Outside the containment grid, Shinny held down her brother who was climbing out. Shinny told him to go back to his sister. He himself was looking for something in the woods. He soon found another little boy with a soccer. The boy thought he had met his kind. So he kindly came forward to say hello. Shinny ignored the boy. Instead, he tore off the band-aid from his neck. At once, Densans crawled out of Shinny's body. The boy instantly looked shocked. Looking at Shinny, who was wrapped in black ants, he recognized it as a fellow hunter, the black ant. The boy crushed the soccer in his hand in anger. Then he accused the black ants of all kinds of crimes. How dare you, who violated the rules of insect beasts and beasts, lay hands on your own kind, I'll kill you. After saying that, the boy builds up his strength in place. The body instantly disappeared from the spot. Only the shattered mask remained. By now the boy had become a mosquito beast. Shinny was hit in the head when she was too late to dodge. The broken armor reveals the cold half of Shinny's face. The insect beast wounded the black ant with a single blow. He was inevitably a little proud. Looking at a motionless Shinny, the insect beasts were going back and forth around him, showing off his speed. Shinny, on the other hand, scratched his head with a bemused look. And then with one punch, he smashed the insect beast into the ground. Then Shinny came out of the jungle and came to Name's side. He told brother, the ball has been found, and people have been sent away. They didn't know that the insect beast was being slowly eaten by Shinny's ants. The boy had a hole dug in his neck by ants. He had to provide a lot of food for the ants every day, or else the ants would go crazy and bite inside him. The feeling was excruciating. Also the ants provided Shinny with great strength. Previously, due to the bug beast incident in Shinny's class, after a week of suspension, everyone went back to school again in separate classes. At this time, in the school classroom, the man with the glasses was still bragging about how brave he was at the time, forgetting that he was the one who dragged Shurjan into the abyss. Name on the other side wanted to go up and give him a kick. However, the girl sitting next to her couldn't stand it first. She stood up and kicked the man with glasses in the stomach. The man with the glasses was stunned by her action. At this point, the girl said viciously, You piece of garbage. It's too noisy. Name learned from all the chatter that the girl's name was Inhue. No one in the class dared to mess with her. Just as Inhue was about to go out, she was stopped in her tracks by an oncoming Shinny. The two were looking at each other. Both sides seemed to sense something. After a long time Shinny walked into the classroom first. He sat down next to Naime with his butt. And then while eating a snack and listening to each other talk about Anhue's cool behavior. Suddenly Shinny sensed bug beast nearby. When Naime wanted to invite Shinny to dinner at noon, she found that he was long gone. By this time Shinny had already left the campus over the wall. On the other side two reapers were heading to the school. They couldn't find any sign of the mosquito beast anywhere. And at the same time there were no more disappearances of children. They didn't know that the mosquito beast had been eaten by Shinny. At that moment Shinny suddenly came out of the alley and ran right into the captain. Looking at Shinny's anxious face, the captain thought about it but didn't pursue it. The two then continued to walk towards the campus. In fact, the purpose of their trip was to find Shinny. When they found Name, Name told them that Shinny had just gone out. The two men also realized that the student they had just met was probably Shinny. So they pulled out a business card and handed it to Name, hoping that she would pass it on to Shinny, and then left the place in a hurry. At the same time, under a viaduct, a humanoid praying mantis clinging to a wall. He was in the dark, seemingly expecting someone to come. Soon a figure slowly appeared. The visitor was none other than the black ant. Shinny followed the scent and found this mantis beast, saw the target appear. The mantis also fell slowly from the wall, and then he waved to Shinny, as if to say, come on over. Shinny no bullshit. His legs suddenly went straight to the mantis, but Shinny's attack was not only easily deflected by mantis, his arm was also deformed by the scythe blow, and then mantis kicked Shinny hard in the chest with his back leg, not waiting for Shinny to stabilize herself. The mantis came at him again. He didn't know that this was a deliberate break put in by Shinny. A heavy punch to the face of mantis. The beaten mantis swayed itself like a puppet, very strange. Shinny was also a little confused by his movements. After careful observation, Shinny suddenly realized that his ants were hovering behind him. Someone must have been behind the mantis with a silk thread. To confirm his suspicions, he scattered some of the ants in his hands. And then he threw it hard at the mantis. The mantis is not moved by the flying ants. But these ants weren't meant to attack him. At this point, the ants were climbing up the silk thread.
The manipulator can only cut the threads. And the mantis fell to the ground with the break of the thread. While she was looking at the thread in his hands in confusion, the body of the mantis moved again. His head suddenly slammed into Shinny. He then opened his mouth wide, revealing the bomb that was about to explode inside. The smoke from the explosion instantly drowned Shinny. Immediately afterwards, two bug beasts came out from behind the curtain. At this point Shinny was leaning hard against the wall. It's obvious that he's been hurt quite a bit. Shinny from the aura emanating from the two insect beasts. I'm afraid it's not going to be easy this time. One of the silk ants stepped forward and put a foot on Shinny's shoulder. We finally caught you. Don't you just love protecting humans? You also killed the mosquito beast, right? Shinny chose to remain silent in the face of her enemy's questioning. This time, the exploding ant beast also came over. And because of you we lost fresh meat. You must pay for this. And with that the exploding ant raised his arm and aimed it at Shinny. But the silkworm ants came out early. He kicked Shinny in the head. But he found out that Shinny's body wasn't inside. This is just an empty shell. The exploding ants suddenly warned him to be careful. It turns out that Shinny, who had shed her armor, had jumped on top of them, smashing hard at the head of the silk ants. After landing, start pushing hard on toes. The body quickly rushes towards the exploding ants. Shinny's movements are flowing in a single breath. The exploding ants are backing up. In the end, he couldn't withstand Shinny's attack and took a heavy punch. But the explosive ants also used their hind legs to shoot the cannonball at Shinny. And it hit Shinny's body solidly. But the armor on his arm blocked most of the damage. Shinny knew he couldn't give him a chance to breathe. So he raised his fist again and swung it at the exploding ants. But just as his fist was a few centimeters away from the exploding ants, the arm got tangled up in some thin blue threads. He couldn't move forward anymore. So he was being controlled by the silk ants behind him. And then the silk ants jumped into midair. The body keeps spinning, pulling Shinny towards herself with a thin thread. A final super roundhouse kick to Shinny's head. Although Shinny blocked the blow with her armored arm, but the huge impact still caused blood to flow from his mouth and nose. And he flew out tens of meters. And finally, Shinny fell to her knees. Exploding ants took advantage of Shinny's temporary unconsciousness aiming the energy cannon in his hand at his head. Seeing that the charge is about to end, Shinny suddenly came to her senses. Feeling bad, Shinny immediately shouted at the armor's place, move. The black ants received Shinny's command to disintegrate quickly. Subsequent disintegration into black matter, converging towards Shinny's place. But by this time, the explosion had already finished charging. He didn't hesitate to pull the trigger on Shinny's head. But the explosion was aimed at the top of the bridge above. It turned out that the hedgehog had come in time to change the trajectory of the shells with a stick in his hand. And afterwards he taunted. Are these the fireworks that were set off to greet me? Then he waved the stick in his hand to force back the enemy. Two insect beasts gathered together like a great enemy. Because the captain of the reaper squad also came here. Let me be your opponent. All of you trash. Explosive ants perceive this person is not simple. He pulled the ball out of the barrel. Two people saw the situation suddenly felt bad before the two men could react. Exploding ants slamming the ball into the ground. A large amount of smoke instantly enveloped several people. The silk ants took the opportunity to fly away dragging the exploding ants with them. The hedgehog couldn't help but complain, these flying insect beasts are disgusting. The captain froze in place with an embarrassed face. But it was good to catch the black ants. But just when the two went up to catch the black ant, they found that he was also missing. In the blink of an eye the night came. Shinny dragged her wounded body slowly towards home, holding onto the wall. The first thing he did when he got home was to ask his grandmother to prepare a table of food. Looking across at Shinny, who was covered in bruises, Grandma asked while she was in tears. Did you not eat anything today? Shinny didn't hide. I didn't catch any of them today, so I'm going to eat more even though he knows it doesn't really work. After eating Shinny returned to her room, the first thing he did was lock himself up. Then he began to hiss in a low voice, as if to meet a great pain. When he ripped off his shirt, his body was covered with dense red spots. These red dots are spreading at a rate visible to the naked eye. This is exactly why the ants inside him are eating his flesh and blood. Except for the insect beasts. Human food doesn't satisfy them. The mental and physical torture was extremely painful for Shinny.